Well, welcome, Judy. <laughs> Thank so you. So she just hauled her horse over, which is a little bit ironic because we are here for trailer loading help. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you've been having with, is it Cowboy? Cowboy. When we first got him um, from day one, even when we picked him up, he, he really braced against going in. At first though, when we would try to load him, he'd brace and then if you put any pressure on the rope, he'd just rear. And people would say, you know, smack him on the butt, you do that, and he'd go straight up. But he just braces yeah. and you cannot move that boy. We've worked for, I've worked all afternoons at, at times, yeah. and I can get two feet in, in, and sometimes I've loaded him where he'll just walk right in on his own. How'd you get him in this morning? We lunged the snot out of him this morning. <laughs> Well, um, I think one of the key things here is going to be um, not just me getting him in the trailer for you, but making sure you're able to apply right. the techniques. Because I'm sure it's what I'm doing. How long a drive wrong. was it for you this morning? Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, yeah. So it's not like we can just pop in and out for a lesson every other day, you know. So um, I'm going to work with him. We'll see if we can get a routine going on. Um, I either need to watch the video of you or I need to watch you try to load him. Okay. And so we can kind of get a baseline mm -hmm. of, of okay. where we're at with that. And then um, we'll go from there. Okay. So, so normally you focus on drawing him in with the leader, okay? Yep. Okay. All right, that's all I need to see. So what he was telling us there is you, you on one hand, you weren't winning the game, meaning he drug you out of the trailer when he pulled back. So, so that wasn't effective, okay? And the idea with finding an effective level of pressure is about just it doesn't necessarily mean more pressure it just means a way that gets the horse to yield to what you're asking for right and so by having a tool like a stick and a string to tap him in the butt when he goes backwards would hopefully help that without adding any more pressure to the halter hey would you guys like to see more detailed training videos that show you step by step how to train your horse and work through common issues we have a huge video library on my patreon page as well as dropping new videos every week you can also send me a message on there and get questions answered about your horse. You can even send videos for me to coach. So it's a really great value at just $10 a month. Next January, it's going to go up to $20 a month for all that. So if you want to get in now for $10, make sure you get signed up, and I'll look forward to seeing you on there. The other thing is by him running backwards, he's telling us that he feels more relief back here, here yeah. than here. Horses are always seeking comfort, so they're always going to move to where they find relief at. Um, and so we got to communicate to him that the relief is in the trailer. And so when you were standing here at the trailer not putting any pressure on him, he's he's fine there. But as soon as you put pressure and said, could you go in there? Then he went, no, I can't. I feel right. better yeah. out here. Okay, so this is the weird thing about horses and training and psychology. Whatever it is you want your horse to do, they find that to be a trap. They're, in, they're subconsciously, their instinctual instincts say, the predator is going to try to herd you to where they want you to go because that's where the trap is. Oh, okay. So they're designed, they're wired to outmaneuver us and figure out how to evade what we're doing. So what we need to do is make it uncomfortable where they want to go and give them relief where they mm -hmm. want to go, which is the idea of how, what actually ended up working for you, which is working him out here and rest there. But we probably can refine that technique a little bit. Let's see what we got here. I, re I, I know it's frustrating for, for you with him, but I really enjoy puzzles, you know, puzzles like this with horses to see what they're doing. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad you enjoy puzzles. <laughs> now, that was an ask. So I asked him to go in and he said yes. Then he decided to back out. So I'm going to agree with him and go, yeah, let's back out. But do you see where the marks are in the sand of how far back we were? Mm -hmm. We're going to go all the way back there. So we're plenty far from the trailer. And then tap him on the butt to come forward. So the pressure again came on. None of that pressure was by the trailer at all. But because I'd asked him once, I'm, I wasn't going to ask him again. <clears throat> so like here again, I asked him once. I'm not going to ask again. He's choosing to back out because... <laughs> <laughs> he made a good, good choice there. If he's choosing to back out, I want him, 
I want to sign him up. I want to go, okay, you want to come out? We're going to come out, but we're going to go all the way out. We're going to go all the way out back here. And then we're going to come all the way forward again. And I'm still going to tap him, even though he came forward, because that's kind of the negative reinforcement that makes this look sweeter. Because I added pressure out there, where he previously was telling us is the good spot, <clears throat> because I added pressure out there, it makes this look sweeter. It's so important when you're trail loading a horse to not make them feel like they can't come out. They can't feel like they have to go in, they can't feel like they have to come out. It has to be their choice in order for it to be a horse standing in there with confidence, you know, relaxation, you know, all those, all those pieces. But you can see the, the part for me here is not as much loading as it is him staying. He wanted to come out? Great, come on out. He's better about coming out when at first he would just explode out. He doesn't do that so much anymore. Takes a little fussing by this bar here. Kind of lost my momentum. And that's one of the tricky parts about this is it would be nice to have him kind of follow me in. Um, but I, I kind of like the idea of you being back here where you can easily put the butt bar up, you know? So I don't really want to get in the habit. Now he's just hanging out here and this isn't all the way enough in the trailer. So this is where I'm going to proactively ask him to step out. So back here, as I approach the trailer, I'm going to switch the lead rope hands here. And this is where you can put your lead rope over his butt like this, and you could step out and come back here and put the butt bar up so once he stands the all the way in. If yep. he comes out, you go, oh, great, let me help you come out. See, he doesn't want to back up as far anymore because he's ran into pressure. But I still have to follow through with that correction. But I don't want him to get too attached to me always having to be in the trailer with him. Because again, if you're gonna if you're gonna get the like I see him wanting to go back in. If you're gonna go all the, uh, be able to load him by yourself, you need to be able to come back out here. Right. And as soon as I take a step out, he comes out. Yeah. But again, that's what we're fixing right now. Good boy. It just all it takes is more depth of understanding and depth of commitment for him to be there. Good boy, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> so you can see that tap on the butt there is meanings means a lot to him. So this is where we kind of hit some resistance now, and now he's like, okay, he's kind of on to my tricks here. But I'm gonna stay committed to the pattern. And this is where it's that, it's that idea that it's like just being persistent now. We have a strategy that's, that's working. But I'm, I'm starting to think we have less of a loading issue and more of a staying in issue. And that's why I'm tempted to like make it more immediately hot lava. Okay. Right here when he first comes out of the trailer. Okay. And letting him run into that pressure a little bit earlier. Now that's a diff that's a change. <laughs> Right? And see, this is where I'm going to sign him up and I'm going to go, no, you said you wanted to come out. Where you go all the way out when we do that. Okay, so you would back him all the all way, the way out. out. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why? Okay, so why would you back, why would you back That's him called up? signing him up. That's asking him to get committed to his idea. He started to come out of the trailer. 
Do you hear him blowing out there? Yeah. I'll have the mic picks that up. That's him getting relief in the trailer. And see there, he's like, wait a minute. If I keep coming, I'm going to run into more pressure out there. And again, that's what gives him responsibility. So I just started thinking to myself, I didn't need the pressure to happen there. I needed to change the timing. The pressure started to need to happen here okay. while he was thinking backing out. Not pressure over there, relief in the trailer. It was more like you're going to run into hot lava. Because it's more like it became a bad habit of his more than I was teaching him to trailer load. This is more like this is a habit of yours to come out. Okay. So he needs to run into pressure a little earlier on. If he was just afraid of the trailer and it was a horse that just didn't have any experience with it, you would be way better off putting pressure on back there. But because, And I would still start him off in the next training session, pressure back there. But I switched the timing of it because I wanted him to... It was like, we're just going in and out. And I didn't feel like he was that bothered about going in. It was more of like, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a, a bad habit that he had learned more than he was actually like concerned about the trailer. Okay, so I'm gonna ask him back out. I feel like that's a significant improvement from where we started. Oh my gosh, yes. And what I'd like to do now is get let him have a little break from the trailer. And I want you to practice. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little review session here and then I'm gonna hand you the keys. Oh, he's excited. We're going to the trailer here. I was like, wait a minute here. I don't normally do this. And then again, I don't wanna hang out in there too long. I wanna come out here and get to where you could do this by yourself. And again, we're, I don't wanna to try to make him go from negative two to a positive eight in one training session. But this would be the next stage is for you to load him and then you stand out here and just kind of practice reaching for that butt bar without that having any, any uh, effect on him. So you're gonna ask him to follow a feel with this. Okay, come on sweet boy. Come on buddy. <laughs> We can't get him out. We're stuck. <laughs> no one would believe that if I said that. If I took the moment said that. Okay. Now practice backing him all the way, all the way out, all the way. Back, oh, back him all the way. Use your rope. Use the lead rope. Good job. Very good. Bump on that halter. Don't let him go forward there. Back him up. Back him up. I'm gonna help you out here. He's a little stuck because he's anticipating pressure, which is kind of good on one hand, but he can't push through your hand there, okay? Now, we're not going to tap him back here because that's why he's getting so sticky backing up. Okay. Practice. Go ahead and practice uh, walking him up to the trailer. Try to get a nice straight shot at it, and you're going to pass the, the rope around the divider. <clears throat> so right to the trailer, right to the trailer. If you take too long out there, it won't have the effect we're going for. Don't drag him. Don't pull him to the trailer. There you go. Now it's stick and string. Tap him with the stick and string. Good. Super. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, be nice and quiet. You kind of threw that rope on him. You're going to want to be a little quieter with that. And come on out here and just pet him on the butt. Don't try to make him stay in. You predator, you. <laughs> but you got to get your timing down with putting a feel here and then just a light tap on the butt to, to send them in. Yep. So it's basically you just practicing hand, you know, handling the rope and, and that, that part through there. The amount of pressure you're putting on him was good. If this was him learning this for the very first time, you would have no trouble loading him moving forward because he's already knows some moves. And the second you had the rope, he started trying them on you we know that he's going to try those again. And so this is going to require you to get handy enough where you can kind of follow the, the strategies that I'm showing here. Okay, so let's ask him to back out again. And I just want him to come all the way out to here. I want you to put a soft feel on the halter. So in fact, stand, I want you to stay in the trailer here. And then um, you're going to ask him out of the trailer. See, that's good. This is the first time he's eating in there. So this is really positive. So go ahead and ask him out. And then once he gets all the way out, you're gonna tap him on the butt. Just put a feel, no, no clucking noises. Oh. <laughs> Getting further in the trailer. Because those noises mean go forward, not really backward. Back him just to where he's four feet on the ground. Okay, now a little feel on the halter and a tap on the butt. Yep, get his nose over there. Tap him there. 
what you need to try to not do is get in a hurry there. Just take your time, get everything lined up, and then make, you know, swing and tap them on the butt accurately. Okay. Don't try to rush something there when it's not. The worst thing you could do is try to load him right in those in that moment. You just need to get him thinking forward off the halter. That is a separate issue from trailer loading. It comes up while trailer loading, but him being a, a being leaning into that halter is a separate problem from trailering. And what I'm teaching him is that when he pushes back into that halter, he's gonna run into pressure. And that's why I'm tapping him in the butt there. Now, here's where it's conflicting. From a horse training standpoint, this is a great spot to quit him. Like he's really committed to staying in that trailer right now. And if we keep going, we kind of run the risk of just not make, not being very fair to him. I don't know that he would get a lot worse or better or any of that stuff, but it definitely just wouldn't be real fair because he is trying real hard. <laughs> you need more practice. <laughs> and so what I would like you to do is set up a situation at home where you can practice these skills completely separate from the trailer, put the trailer away. You don't really have a trailer loading issue. You have a horse that has learned to pull back into the halter issue. We see that he won't go into a trailer, but if I put other situations out here that were as difficult as a trailer, especially a straight load trailer, you would run into the exact same problem. And then all of a sudden you'd go, oh, I don't have a, a loading issue. I have a horse not following a feel issue. And then I would also have you practice just the transition because it was clumsy for me too when I started passing the rope around that divider and all that. It was, it's just a little tricky. Um, and so there's enough, there was enough of those little tricky things going on that it was too much, too many variables for you. So what you can do is you can have good feel and timing for your horse. If you get your coordination down and dealing with the rope and the stick and string in and out of the trailer separate from your horse, practice that skill separately. And then when you put the two together, and this is where there's like levels to horsemen, horse training is like a person that can, that has been in those situations so many times, you have the muscle memory of what to do. Okay. And you know what the horse is apt to do. That's how you can have impeccable timing. But when you're not sure what the horse is going to do and you're clumsy with the tools, it's really hard to have great timing. And that's what was challenging for you. So, so I'm encouraging you to practice them separately. Practice with your horse with obstacles, put a feel and tap and practice you handling your ropes and stick and string like you did with me, you could, I don't know if you need to tie the halter onto something or just practice, pretend there's a horse there, practice switching the rope, little feel, tap, you know, just putting all that together so that you're handy with it. So tell me kind of what your takeaways are from this. Um, one, slow down. <laughs> all right. Go slower and softer hands. Yeah, don't pull, yeah. but a feel and, yeah. yeah. Those two. Um, I, I, Ride, I think, was really soft hands. But when you were, you know, having you be the horse and tell me what that pressure felt like, that was really helpful to me. Okay. So being mindful of how, how when I'm pulling, when I might not, not when I think that I'm not. Yeah, super. Yeah. So th those are, those probably are the two most helpful things. Like, all it was helpful. Yeah. But for me to remember when I'm doing that with him is slowing down and, and not putting that pressure on. Yeah. Super. And then you're going to, when you get home, the number one thing I want you to do is practice this separately from him. Practice with him with obstacles, not the trailer, because he, this isn't fixed, this isn't cured. He, he has learned to do it the wrong way more than once, and he's gonna, go, he's gonna try it again, but having had this session, it should go way quicker. This should be five times longer than it normally will take for you at home if the technique is being applied correctly. Um, but if you get your skills separate, you won't, you won't have a, a, tra a trailer loading issue. <music>